<laughs> Look at that face. It's been busy. <laughs> yes, it's been a very busy face. Yeah, it's, uh, it's been a busy couple of weeks. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Feed My Sheep, Earthquake Reports, and more. And uh, there's they are interesting times that we're in with an awful lot going on in a lot of areas. Uh, before we begin talking about any of this, um, we'll do as we always do uh, with our faith giving praise to our Heavenly Father, Jesus, and asking for protection for this program and our listeners and ourselves. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we still have this program that you've set up, that you've led us into um, to share with your children, all those that you would ha have come here to um, gain information from us in a number of areas. And we thank you for the protection that you provide. We pray that you continue that protection. We seek shelter under your wings um, for your audience, your audience, not ours, your audience, and for us. And Jesus, these are times when we really need to be led and led in the ways of righteousness in all things that we may serve in the best way possible and we seek to continue to serve and Holy Spirit we ask that you continue to bring us the judgment the understanding that we need um, of all things and we thank you for the peace that we still have for the joy that we still have for joy is a weapon made powerful by God for the tearing down of the strongholds of Satan. And certainly those strongholds are underway big time right now. And all of this in your holy name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. So, as uh, everybody knows, there's been a lot happening north of the border here. And um, it's reverberating all over the world and down to the Americas down to you guys as well and uh, you've got the um, the DC event coming up and we know what's happening over in Eastern Europe as well uh, we've had um, extraordinary measures put into place up here which makes danger for pretty darn near everybody that's here yeah and that we all need to deal with proactively. So everything that we've ever said about prepping, um, whether it's a bug out bag or get home bag and shelter in place and just prepare your place is probably for, I'd say 90% of everybody is the best thing to do. And now we are past the time when you should have started. So you should have been started and well on your way to getting anything and everything ready that you can whether you live in the city, whether you live in the country, whether you live in a red or a blue state, right? And whether you are a faith or, or don't have any particular faith in mind, but you still love life and you, you still know that what's going on is not right and you want things to be better whether it's going back to the old which won't happen and which when you look back on it wasn't necessarily better but looking forward and going forward and fighting forward for better times to come because that's what we all deserve and it is our right right so getting stuff prepared and that's what we've been doing and being getting prepared in all ways. We continue yeah. um, with our Bible study. Uh -huh. um, very important to stay in the Word of God, um, yeah. especially in these times. Um, we're to learn and grow, and we grow also through hardship. And this hardship is intended to shake all those off the fence of complacency where they've been residing, that they would choose. And the shaking is political, but it's also increasing in the earth. The yes. shaking of uh, land masses, um, watching just recently 
north of Haida Gwaii in South Alaska that we are having major plate shift, fault shift events there. And that's, um, that location um, has a volcano the same size as, well, it's larger than Mount Hood. Yep. Um, and it's reactivating. And Nass Mountain is bigger than Mount Baker. And that's up in the same area. Um, there's some big, big volcanoes in BC that nobody talks about because they're, they're just not in populated areas, but they're reactivating. Um, what's, what's the name of that? Um, Wrangell, Wrangell, the Wrangell site, um, they call it Wrangell Island, but it's Warnofsky Island, which is just uh, 12 and a half miles southwest. Um, that, um, that island is uh, tracked by Volcano Discovery because it's a volcano. Yep. Um, and so, it, or Alaska Volcano Observatory, sorry. Um, so it's, it's a big deal. Um, and nobody knows about this. And so things are shaking all the way through. Every, every time I look at Northern, uh, Northern California, um, every day the San Andreas is shifting right now. Um, they're shifting um, beside Mount Shasta, um, out of Sacramento. Um, we're getting regular shifts through the New Madrid, Vicksburg, my goodness, Vicksburg from the south end. I don't have time to show you all the seismograms right now. There's just too much going on. But Vicksburg's been shifting with VLF waves for uh, now a week, yep. a full week um, of VLF waves. And it's every day and every, every couple of hours it's having a shift or every half an hour in some cases. And lots and lots of activity, but lots of activity up north as well. Yeah, well, um, we've had VLFs every oh, day. Yeah. I mean, they're they're shifting things every was, every couple of hours. And we were sitting here an evening. hour ago, yeah, um, feeling the, resting my arms on the table and feeling the, we've got a large hardwood table here, and uh, feeling the table shake. A tremor. Vibrate. Tremors. Tremoring underneath. Yeah, that's the first time we've felt the tremors. We've, we've felt the, the movement, the earth of movements the of the VLFs, and we've seen the windows and doors do things, and the gates get stuck and unstuck. But this was the first tremor. Yeah. So, so it's, it's like, okay. That uh, that activity at Warnofsky Island, because it's, uh, I mean, part of it's magma infill, and the tremors associated with magma infill, and earthquakes of uplift associated with that fault and with the, the magma infill, but also a big period, hours long, of, of uh, what <laughs> looks like North America um, fault edge shift. I mean, plate edge shift. So plate margin shifting, that's the North American plate in that location. So that's the only thing that would be doing that, that we're aware of. Um, big stuff going on. It's building. Things yeah. are getting closer, and we're getting closer to um, larger events. As the shaking occurs in the political, the shaking is occurring in the earth in various places. I mean, we're um, all the shaking in eastern U.S. Um, through the Appalachians, very significant. Oh, and a lot of Volcanic reactivation, yeah, tons. Um, looking on on heli plots in the northern end along the St. Lawrence, all the states along the St. Lawrence, going up the Seaway and uh, Grayling has been really busy. Ann Arbor was recently blocked out. Um, in Michigan, um, Minnesota's had all kinds of activity as well. Mm -hmm. We just uh, today, Cons of Prairie in uh, Kansas was blocked out. Um, uh, when does that happen? Yeah. You know, blacked out with VLF waves. So a big shift of a fault going through Cons Prairie. Um, just uh, the activity is becoming more regular and larger and more diverse, more locations being hit. Um, there's just about not a state. Well, there's, there's states that we don't have any seismology for, but virtually every one that has seismology is oh, having those, major uh, shifts. Those man-made signals again? Oh, out of Magadan, Russia, um, we're getting some very unusual, heavy VLF, um, goes from tight to spread out um, VLF Terry waves. Terry showed these for you, to you before, they yeah, were like the, the really short ones with, with a very distinctive signature to oh, them. Oh, those ones, yeah, yeah. we had the, the mystery wave, we had a repeat yeah. of the mystery wave signal, but right now we've got, Magadan, Russia is, uh, is a military installation, and it's having... Um, yeah. 
periods of uh, what looked to be man-made VLF waves, wave activity uh, off the chart in size, but coming across in a way that's repetitive, like uh, there's multiple three times now that it's happened where they've set off a series of waves or a series of waves much the same size and they always have the same appearance um, going from a tight, um, um, like a ramp up of cycles where it's spread apart, then it quickly becomes very, very tight, and then it spreads out and cycles down again. And that's what it looks like in, in the earthquake waves on, on the heliplots. So uh, there seems to be some manipulation of, uh, of geological warfare going on there. Yeah, and isn't that interesting timing with what's going on in Eastern Europe right now? And there's uh, rumors, and you know, of rumors of war and reports of war and war breaking out, physical that everybody sees, whereas we've talked for years about, you know, the um, information warfare that's been going on. Now we're seeing the physical end of it and hoping that more people are waking up to it. Now, on my end of things, um, to me, the white horse is riding, absolutely. Oh, yeah. We know what group that is visible is riding with the bow, with the arrows in the quiver, and um, having wars and oops, um, giving crowns to those to whom it chooses. Yeah. And now the red horse is riding, right, with what you see, also with what is happening up here, both white and red horses are running up here. The um, food shortage spikes are, yeah. are starting to build again. So you know what's happening there. And of course, guess who accompanies all of that? So we definitely have that going on that um, we're aware of, that we're keeping an eye yeah. on. But also, at the same time, is we see that the spirit of Elijah is here and starting to build. And the spirit of Elijah needs to be here before Jesus comes. So when that's building, that means Jesus is here. He's close by. He's probably in the doorway, yes. ready to come in. And the spirit of Elijah is? Well, first of all, it was said, it's biblical, um, that... I That's what Jesus I said. said this that that he cannot come until the spirit of Elijah unless the spirit of Elijah, Elijah comes first. Yes. John the Baptist was described as having the spirit of Elijah. And so John the Baptist was a person of great faith and boldness. So faith and speaking out and boldness and he acted, he was obedient to do as as he was led to do. As as was Elijah. And so it's the spirit of Elijah coming. It's not Necessary. Some people see it that Elijah himself will come, but it's the spirit of Elijah, and it comes in all of us who who are in faith, who are strong in faith, and who encourage each other to be strong, be stronger, and those who are looking and searching and seeking and want to come into the sheep's fold. Right, that's for our shepherds to help them. While Jesus is out finding others, that's our that's part of our missions, right? All of us, any any one of you who is yep. a shepherd, there's somebody who's questioning and wants to know more. It's our it's our job to go out there and speak to people and wouldn't, and encourage them. Wouldn't we, with the joy of the Lord in us, speak to others and want to share the good news? of salvation mm -hmm. against all of the evil and darkness that is presenting itself in these times. Yeah. This yeah. this is first a spiritual war that's going on manifested then in the physical through the political and through through earth changes also. Yeah. This is all as foretold we are indeed going into bi biblical times and times and these are much stronger birth pangs now. Yeah, very much stronger. Ladies, they're probably about one minute apart, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, it's strong. We feel it. We see it. Um, Thank goodness getting... for the prophets in our day. Amanda Grace and uh, her 
prophecy of what was going to occur in Canada with the leadership? Kim, Kim Clement and all of his yep. prophecies. Uh, other people's, other people that are very similar to them. Um, we listen to more and more common people, in other words, ones who don't claim to be prophets or anyone else, but they're having dreams. Dreams and visions. In dreams these and visions, days. and they're sharing, and we're going, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Now, we agree with it from either what we've experienced ourselves or what we know A, B, C, or D has experienced also. So it's up to us to use discernment, test the spirits always, right? And if it rings true, then research it with scripture as well. And my goodness, test the spirits, because it, it, those, there are, just as foretold, there are so many false prophets these days. There are so many that are speaking out to serve their own ends, yeah. and to serve the ends, they're the wolves in sheep's clothing that, are, that we are warned of. The false prophets are here, and they are prophesying long and loud as well. Test the spirits. Check it against the Bible. If you're not, if you're not sure... Um, just don't don't accept everything that everybody is saying because there are so many um, that are so far off base. And we still invite you to uh, join us on Discord at Feed My Sheep hyphen Shepherd's Class. Okay, come and fellowship. Um, whether you belong to a church group or not, or you study on your own, come and study with us. Come and fellowship and and chat and talk. Um, not only is it for Bible study, but we support each other, right? And we, you know, we give the strength of the Lord and Jesus out, and you give it out, and we receive it, and it just goes around, and we build that joy. And let me tell you, I know some people um, who are so despondent and depressed right now, and, you know, we say, come on, stop, you know, give up your whatever, worship that you've decided to do is it fulfilling you no it's not helping you you're depressed you're ready to just give it all up or go out in a blaze of glory it's but time to come back it's to the time father, to come back right? to the father yeah come back come back through jesus he and everybody says well you guys you don't seem to have salvation. anybody you don't seem to have any problems or anything like that you know so what do you know about all of this stuff well it's because we have the joy of the lord and jesus in us yeah and we put faith and trust in it and we grow in it it's food it's water and as far as strength for goes us. we know that these are not myths in the bible when yeah. all the forces were arrayed against israel and they were unprepared and they prayed they were on their knees praying um, for salvation and one angel took out 185,000 in one night um, these forces on earth are like chaff to be blown away by the breath of god and we really have nothing to fear. Trust in the Lord. He is worthy of every ounce of trust that you can find. We are just terrible at humans of, of, of exhibiting the trust that we know that God deserves. And it's hard to it trust hard. in what you can't see, but we need to. And he's never broken one promise, not one promise ever. He is faithful to his children. He will lead us. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I yanked the soapbox out from under him. You guys didn't see that yeah. part. <laughs> Thanks for letting me know you just stopped me at the <laughs> <second> there. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Wow. So, yeah. You can have the joy of the Lord. Yeah. Just let yourself. Don't be afraid. Okay? That your your spirituality grows with your faith. Your faith grows with your spirituality. You have sanctification going on every day. Every day that you try just a little bit harder to come closer to Jesus, Holy Spirit, and Father, the more joy you will feel. Is it scary out there? Oh, heck yeah. There's days when I go, uh. And then I think about the time I got Rick rolled by Jesus. It makes me laugh. And I go, yeah, you know what? He's got it. It's all good. So, um, you hang on to different things. And now, you also, though, do not just sit back and expect Father and Jesus and Holy Spirit to do everything for you. You have to be proactive. And right now, 
proactive is making sure that you have one shelter that's the first and most important thing water is another right food three things right there and I'm talking on the world level the the physical natural you know what you all you already know what you need for the supernatural but you need these three things shelter water food then security and security can be all sorts of things and it, security is also surrounding yourself with people who think like you who act in the same way see the preparedness coming yep. who are not suffering from normalcy bias trust me you cannot cannot talk someone who has their head in the sand or is so brainwashed by what is going on and what is being said you can't drag them with you okay you just even members of your own family you just have to do what you do best and do what you know is right and people will either come around or they won't but you you have a job to do and that's to be around for everybody as best as you can and to be ready don't take any guff from anybody don't back down um, galaxy quest never give up never surrender right just keep going and have faith and that faith is going to bring you joy and it's going to bring you comfort as you prepare for everything that's coming on and make sure to prepare for six months or a year right and yes you build it up but first things first secure your shelter or secure yourself a shelter build your water supplies okay build your food supplies and that doesn't mean going out and spending thousands of dollars on MREs because let me tell you right now up here um, a lot of small companies according to a couple of people who are in those small companies were watching their videos and they're saying that um, a certain um, first aid group was contacting them and saying we want all your supplies and we want it now and we want it shipped out and to a certain city by tomorrow noon and it wasn't for civilians. civilians okay it was for others who had come into country we're pretty sure yeah it was for others who had come into country they were un-Canadian uh, yeah very much un-Canadian in their behavior and in yep. their uh, um, geolocation and uniforms and uniforms so um, things like that are disappearing yeah. Right? So you work, as a civilian, you work the best way you know how. And you gather your, your foodstuffs with you, you gather water. And most importantly, um, a water source or sources, and then for cleaning the water. You can go up and look online how much bleach or how much of a high-grade hydrogen peroxide that can be used with water to clean mm -hmm. it. If you... And those are inexpensive ways of treating water. If you can't afford the aqua pure or whatever other type of filters there are out there, that will get you 3,000 gallons. Now, 3,000 gallons, um, we, have, we have cisterns here at 2,400 gallons. And say two of them are close to 5,000 gallons. That lasts us, and we only... Between everybody here, we use maybe 30 gallons, 25 to 30 gallons in total per day. And that's with, that's with pets, that's with human consumption for bathroom, laundry, food cooking, hygiene, everything. That's only 30 gallons a day. And that lasts, you know, X amount of time before um, we hope that more rain comes in or we have to have a water delivery. So, you know, if you're storing physical water with you and you think, oh, wow, that's a lot, I'll get through it. No, just think, 5,000 gallons. So getting yourself a water source that you can always access is a good thing. Having those, at least those two items, like your hydrogen peroxide, research it, okay? There are companies that, that do this. Some governments, some agencies recommend hydrogen peroxide. In our area, they recommend hydrogen peroxide over bleach. Um, I actually prefer it because it 
dissipates out of the water faster, you know, right. in the correct amounts. But those two things, clean water. Yeah, you need to be able to clean it because um, I, um, what I understand, we go through roughly in a year with two of us being conservative in our usage with, with the pets that we have here. And we've got three large dogs. Um, and, and a pump. The pump takes the most. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and, of course, Sam. Sam. Um, we're going through about 20,000 gallons a year. You just can't store that kind of water. You can't put that. Stored water is for emergency, short-term emergency, emergency needs. And, you, at, you know, maybe, maybe for a week. And that's just drinking water. At some point, you've got to clean things. You've got to clean dishes. You've got to clean whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you have to have water to do that. Um, you've got to have water because to you flush. Unless hygiene. you're going to put in uh, latrines, you've got to have... Um, <clears throat> you, you've got to be able to clean things. And uh, so it takes a certain amount of water. And, and uh, you might be able to get by on uh, less than 20,000 gallons. But that's being very conservative for two people to get by on 20,000 gallons. Right. So in, in, we're not telling you this to scare you. We're telling you this because this is what we've tracked over the years. Yeah. So we know how much we use um, and how much when I have people come here, family come here, how much they use, how much it, how much it increases the usage, yeah. right? And they try very hard to follow the water rules. You know, but it still increases, and we're all going to go through that. And you're going, well, uh, where do we store it? You know, you guys do have city water or town water. We subsist solely on rainwater collection. Yeah. And a couple times during the summer, we have to have uh, a truck deliver water if it's a really bad summer. Yeah. On a dry, dry. On a dry, dry. Yeah. So it can be done. It can be done. Um. So you have your shelter. Secure your shelter for earthquakes. Secure it for cold. Secure it for heat. All the different elements you need for that. Um, believe it or not, you know those corrugated plastic? And I've talked about this before. Corrugated plastic that you see people have uh, out in front of their business and whatnot. And they've got the, the, you know, the peel and stick letters on them. You can buy that stuff really cheap, and you can make it to fit your windows, and yet tape it in there if you have a broken window from an earthquake or a tornado and your house is still standing but your windows are broken. You can tape that in there. You've still got sunlight coming through. And if it's a two-cell, it provides a bit of insulation. Yeah, or you Things. can go even smaller. You can get just a roll of plastic. And, and that uh, helps. And that uh, tuck tape versus duct tape, the red tuck tape, Tuck tape. Really, really sticky stuff. Anything. To anything. Um, but uh, you can you can put, um, you can make your, if you put plastic on the outside and on the inside, you've got a gap in between. Now you've got a thermal window and it's done, it fits anything. You don't have to get anything cut. Yeah. Um, so there's various ways to do it, but you just need to have a little bit of stuff on hand. Yeah. And that's what you do. So sh secure your shelter. So secure it for security purposes. Check what's around you in your neighborhood, in your yard, things like that. Again, check your food supplies. Don't rely on emergency goods. A lot of salt, a lot of sugar in them. And if you look at those packages, they're, they're great for short-term emergencies, but not long-term. Because those things are high in carbs. And what do carbs do to your body? They give you a big, quick boost, and then, boom, poof. Yeah. All right? And if you can't afford to get the protein ones all the time, then you're in trouble. So think of alternative ways of food that you will eat and that your family will eat and store that. Um, we go and get big bins from Lowe's or Home Depot or whatever and we label them for what we're going to put into them and we have things, you know, stored. Mm -hmm. And that's what everybody should do. Whether you're prepping or, you know, because you're one of those people who prep, or you're just smart enough to know that um, we're supposed to be able to take care of ourselves and not expect somebody else to come and do it for us, i.e. from the government. Yep. Remember what Ronald Reagan said. You know, if somebody says, hi, we're here from the government, we're here to help, run. run. 
like mad. Yeah. So anyway, that's what we've been doing. That's why we haven't been here. We've been watching the uh, situation deteriorate. It deteriorated more today um, with a promise of we'll extend the um, um, the measures the measures as often and as long as necessary. And uh, and then we're going to extend what we cover with them. Yeah. So um, that's why we're going, okay, we will adjust for that. Yeah. In, in essence, the Charter of Rights and Freedoms has been suspended. Yeah. So that's what we look at, and that's what we prepare for. But we knew this was coming, right? Yeah. Matthew told us, Daniel told us, Revelation told us, I think there were seven Hebrews. That was John, and, wasn't it? And through John, John. Through yeah. John, yeah. yeah. And um, we've been told several times, yeah. so we need to pay attention to it, right? Okay, so again, remember we do have on Discord, feed my sheep, hyphen, shepherds, you know, apostrophe S, class. Please, um, come join us. Write, um, you know, contact me. And it's green hyphen eyed, you know, as in I, then space gimlet. So green eyed gimlet, hashtag 4494. Message me for an invite, you know, let me know that you're they from the channel here. And then we'll do the invite thing, friend invite, and uh, get you into the channel for fellowship. This is Christian fellowship, okay? And this is Discord. It's not and regular it's internet. It's on Discord. Yeah. And how do you sign up for Discord? How do you oh, find it? Technosaur. Hmm. I just did that. I was just doing that. I just did that. Well, they have okay. to look up the word Discord, though, don't they? Terry. Terry. I managed okay. to do it. I managed to do it. So if I can do it, you guys can do it. It's, it's not that tough. No, I barely made it's it. It's not that tough, but he is a technosaur, so... But you can do it. So please, join us. Come fellowship with us. Come study with us. You know, you believe in God. And that's what we're about. Whatever your faith is, and when you believe in God, the great I Am, God Almighty, Jehovah, Jehovah, Abba, Adonai, Father. And that's who we believe in. That's who we follow. We believe in Jesus Christ. Is our King, our Savior, our friend, our teacher, and Holy Spirit. And so that's who we talk about and we rejoice in. And we hold each other up, we lift each other up, and we study. We study to be approved by Father and to make us better citizens of the world. Alrighty? And we so. are meek before God and strong before man. Speak boldly. This is a time of boldness. This yeah. is the time of the spirit of Elijah. This is when he comes. And if you already know what job Father and Jesus have you in mind for, that's what you follow. Not what we say, because we all have different jobs that we do. That's right. So listen, listen. ask Holy Spirit, ask Father, ask Jesus, what is my job? I'm ready to do my job. Because if you are a son or daughter of, of the Almighty, then you can say, I want to serve. And you'll be given a job. And he's got something in mind for you. He's just been waiting for you to ask. Right? So just Prepare listen. the way of the Lord. Prepare the way of the Lord. Yeah. Because when the Lord is in you, when you have the spirit of holiness in you from God, then you have God in you and you have God for you. And with all of heaven standing with you, how can you possibly fail? What do you have to fear? That's right. Yeah. So, it's anyway, simple. yeah, please join us. We will be back on here again. We're scrambling right now as as things deteriorate and, and drag out. So we apologize for not being on. And we will definitely make our best endeavor to um, get on here again. And Terry will bring more reports. Yeah, of yeah. earth changes that are going on that are increasing um, and we'll take it from there day by day alrighty so you know do drop us a line and join us on discord do you drop in no <laughs> <laughs> okay we look forward to seeing you absolutely we love you all yeah. God bless you keep you safe Amen. and direct every step that you take 
Okay? Talk to you later. Bye for now. Bye.